Good morning, everyone. The short history of the long road is a coming of age story, really, about a teenager navigating the twists and turns of life on the road. It is a wonderful film, and it did incredibly well on the film festival circuit, but like so many other things, COVID. And so the filmmakers, by the way, all of them female, had to rethink how this film was going to make it to the masses, enter the drive in. Their story, as they say, is history. Take a look. Not everyone wants to live like us. Of course they do. The short history of The Long Road tells the story of a young girl named Nola who lives in a van with her father traveling across the country. The film stars singer and actress Sabrina Carpenter in a breakout performance. This is a, a whole new side of her like you've never seen her before. It was unbelievable. Holy cow. She's a chameleon. New York filmmaker Ani Simon Kennedy wrote and directed the movie. What's up, little lady? which co-stars Danny Trejo as an auto body shop owner who forges a bond with Nola. A lot of what Nola goes through in her journey is being able to learn to rely on the kindness of strangers and form relationships. Kayla Yatsko is the film cinematographer. What was the process of making this film like? Because it felt so intimate. We did want it to, to put you in Nola's shoes. You're completely with her for the whole movie. There's not a scene that she's not in, and we wanted to shoot it from her perspective, and her perspective is having grown up in this van. Ani and Kaylin run the production company Bicephaly Pictures. They're two women making their mark in the male-dominated film industry. There's just shockingly few women um, still, but at the same time, there are so many of us women out there making the work, and it's all about getting it seen. The duo spent about three weeks in New Mexico making this film back in 2018. It premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival last year. It was beautiful seeing it on the big screen and having sold out screenings. After making the rounds on the festival circuit, they landed a distribution deal with FilmRise. But as they prepared to release the film in theaters nationwide, the coronavirus pandemic hit. Even if certain states reopened um, and certain theaters were functioning again, even at, you know, 25% capacity. We didn't feel ethically that we could encourage people to come out and watch a movie in theaters when we ourselves as filmmakers didn't feel comfortable. And so we've pivoted to drive-ins. Drive-ins have seen a resurgence during the lockdown. And while the film is also being released digitally and on demand, Kashori Rajan, the film's producer, says drive-in theaters allow the movie to still be seen on the big screen and in a special way connected to the film. There is a thematic tie-in between a road movie and viewing it at a drive-in, which was, um, I think, one reason we were, we felt more confidence going in that direction without it feeling like a band-aid to a situation. And I hadn't even thought, of, thought about the, the very theme of the film and then actually getting on the road to go and actually be in your car to actually watch it. That's very meta. Kind of just let the road tell me where to go. Pandemic isn't just affecting how movies are being released. What do you think the, um, the post-COVID filmmaking world is gonna look like? Million dollar question. <laughs> I know. Everyone is consumed with that question in our industry. It is every week I'm on a Zoom with various producers, various studio execs, various other filmmakers talking about how we're gonna get back safely. I think things are gonna look very different for a very long time. I think it's anybody's guess. I don't think that, you know, 12 to 14 hour days on set was ever sustainable. Like, do we wanna go back to that? So I think this is a real opportunity to see what can change and, you know, how we can let more people in and how we can lead healthier lives while doing what we love. If you would like to check out the, the short history of The Long Road, you can always check out uh, their, their website. It's listed right there. I feel like my Vanna White moment. And coincidentally, you can always rent it or purchase it. Coincidentally, uh, Ani and Kaylin, their first film was about a dystopian society where you had to wear face masks outside and wash your hands thoroughly before coming inside. So I think these women not only gifted filmmakers and producers, but they may have a little bit of ESP. So I'm gonna keep in touch with them and make, sh make sure I have my finger on the pulse of their next film so I can be prepared for the next pseudo-catastrophe or not-catastrophe that may or may not happen in our society.